Welcome to the Ignorance of Strength Podcast. I'm your host, Fabian Motherfucking Ojeda, and I don't know shit, but that's okay. All right, all right, let's get this shit started. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the Ignorance of Strength Podcast. Hope you all enjoyed the previous episode with Miss Kelly Tata. Uh, you know, I think we're going to have her back on. There was some stuff... Uh, she wanted to talk to, uh, talk about, and we'll have her back on. Interesting story there. But I want to welcome to the podcast a couple of new guests. I want to welcome to the podcast for the very first time. Uh, we got John and Chad, the gracious two. How are you guys doing? Great. Thank you. Thanks yes, for having sir. us. Doing well. Yeah. So, uh, you know, glad to talk to you, uh, both of you. Um, now we're going to talk a, a little bit about your 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 podcast, right? The gracious two. Uh, what, what a name, right? And I, I know... Uh, we got uh, you. Give me a little bit of background, John. When we were talking uh, before, but talk to talk to me about the name there. I'm like, I like I like that name. It's catchy. Well, thank you. Yeah, Chad, you want me to take this one? Yeah, Start go ahead. You, you got it. You, you go well, ahead. Because you because you technically named it. So Ch- Chad was in a band, uh, of course, in in uh, live, which is a huge huge band. But he was also in a band called The Gracious Few, and it was three members from Live and two members from Candlebox. And they put out a killer, a killer album. And when we were coming up with this idea to do this podcast, we were kind of letting some of his fans know what was going on. And somebody said, why don't you do the graceful few, like a play on his last name and then the gracious few. And I mentioned it to Chad and he was like, dude, what about the gracious two? And I was like, yo, that's the name right there. (laughs) And uh, lo and behold, here we are. Here we are. Yeah, I always, uh, always love wordplay like that, right? Um, and so I, I wanted to, before we talk about your podcast and really dig in about what it's all about, you know, when you got started and things like that, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, the origins there, right? So talking about live and the gracious few. And so, Chad, you know, um, I actually uh, – uh, Live is one of those bands I grew up uh, in in the '90s as a kid, like listening to on K Rock and everything. I think yeah. I first heard of Live on Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> when they were That's the first time you heard of us, That's yeah. Funny. When when they were critiquing one of the videos, I I I don't remember. I think it must have been I Alone, right? But it, it was it was I Alone, <laughs> and they took a special liking to me. So that was yeah. that's like kind of my uh, claim to fame as as a drummer in Live is. is Beavis and Butthead pointing me out, running around the set like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask, was 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 that uh, did, if if they uh, shouted you out or they pointed you out there, or if anybody oh, like you did. know, like great. if if people still like you know mention that to you, reference that. Absolutely, it's it's you know the, we made that video in sometime in '94, and we got on the set, and the the director. I think his name was Tim Pope. He he. We had drums on the set, and we were, I was playing along like I normally would. And he was like, "I don't like the drums." The director's like, "I don't like the drums on the set. Take them off." I'm like, "Okay, what the fuck am I supposed to do?" Right. Yeah. So he's like, "Just just dance around, and sing, and do whatever." So that's what <laughs> oh, we got. Man. And so of course, in in the in the video, Beavis and Butthead video part of it, there they, he at one point they're like, "Yo, did you leave your drums in the van? Like, where where are your drums?" It's, <laughs> it's like it's like yeah, they're out in the van. Yeah, that and uh, that and when Butthead's giving Beavis a hard time, saying you know uh, the singer that he goes like, I think he wants you, Beavis. You know, like he's like, (laughs) (laughs) so that's yeah. So that was pretty memorable for me. The other thing I wanted to you know once I once I heard live, I wanted to throw out there um, one of the songs that I that I really liked, and I think it was it came out when I was like in middle school, uh, was Dolphins Cry, right? And 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 you know sometimes people mess up lyrics and they're singing them out loud and it, it, it makes sense to you then. But like back then I didn't have the internet, right. I couldn't just look yeah. up the lyrics. Mm-hmm. And so one misconception I always had was that, uh, and I used to sing it out loud that the song, you know, dolphins cry. Uh, the chorus was Lolita's. All right. I'm like, <laughs> I thought it was the name Lolita. Right. And, and people are like, that's not what it says. And honestly, that's not appropriate. I'm like, I don't know any of this stuff. What do you, what do you mean? You know, uh, you, you, you ever heard the lyrics messed up so badly like that? I've heard that one before. Yeah. Uh huh. There's a few others that I can't remember right now, but yeah, there's, I mean, you know, people come up and say, did you, did, did Ed sing this here? And we're like, no, it's completely wrong. What are you talking about? So, yeah. That, that or, or love will eat us. Yes. Yes. Love will eat us. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. 
That's awesome. Uh, either either way, it like might have to change the lyrics there. <laughs> right. Um, and so, you know, I'm, I'm not going to dwell too much on, on, you know, the, the old stuff with the bands and everything, but, uh, when John and I were talking, you know, he pointed out, you know, the, the gracious few and, and I'd never heard of the band. And to me, it was like, that's crazy because it's, it's like, you know, two, you know, uh, nineties, you know, bands almost forming like a, like a super group, you know? Yeah, and yeah. I, I, I love live. I like Candlebox. You know, it's like putting them together i was like and i listened to it for the first time a few weeks ago i'm like where the hell was this i'm like i never heard this on k-rock i'm like i would have loved it you know because um there wasn't much i think it was like just a, a few songs that were put out yeah we put out two songs honest man was the one that did the the best and it was uh i mean we, what we, we we decided to be super indie with it like do our own thing and we had an investor lined up and then they fell through right at the last minute as the record was finished and about to come out. And it's like, that became a huge clusterfuck. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we did a tour for it and it was like, it was, it was, it was fun. And I loved the music, but it was, it was definitely hard to like, like, okay, we started a whole new band. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's a different landscape yeah. than it was back in the day. And Chad, so did marketing dollars dry, dry up there? Is that because that's basically what it seemed like to me? Because that whole album is phenomenal, and it just seemed like it wasn't put out and to where people could hear it properly. Yeah, we we got some funding to put out the first single, Honest Man, and then we put out Appetite after that. But you know, it just there just wasn't money for it. So, gotcha. Yeah, that's it's kind yeah. of crazy sometimes how you know you can have some really good stuff and nobody you know will I'm not saying nobody heard it but I mean like right. it, it won't be out there for the masses you know because some of the greatest musicians could be out there living you know singing the most beautiful music and then you know nobody's there to hear it it's kind of crazy absolutely yeah you, you got to get it out there somehow mm -hmm. we, we we failed to do that on a big scale but you know we had fun like I said and I'm very proud of that record so. It was like a nice hidden treasure when when I did listen. I was like, cool. "Whoa, this is like really cool." I'm glad you, know? you liked it. Thanks, man. For sure. And uh, so now I want to you know I want to jump into you know the the podcast. And so the two of you, you know, you're the you're the host for the podcast. Tell me a little bit about it. Like, what's your format? What do you what do you do with it? Are you doing like interviews? Are you you all playing off of each other? What's what's that like? Uh, well, so the cool thing about it is it's it's a live show. Um, and we started off with episode one, just kind of our tagline tagline is putting the shit in bullshit. So it was really just about us going on there and speaking our mind because the world has got to the point where you can't speak your mind anymore and everybody's getting canceled and it's all one sided. So we wanted to come up with a show where anything could be said on it. Uh, it doesn't matter what your political beliefs are, what, what side you're on. Just we could come on and have open discussions and talk. And it turned uh, it's still that, but it also turned into where we had guests come on and, and they get to shoot the shit with us, get to talk to chat about, you know, reminiscing about old days and stuff like that. So we start off every show where it's just Chad and myself usually uh, shooting the shit for like the first 15 minutes. Then we bring the guest on for 45 to an hour, um, you know, and then we and then we end the show shortly after the guest goes off. And just to keep it fresh, we never have any anything pre-planned, so to speak. You know, I might have a couple topics I want to bring up and stuff, but we're not like game planning, so to speak, beforehand. We just let the show kind of free flow. And, um, you know, so far, so good, man. The audience is coming along. They're real. Um, they're real like they're commenting and they're liking and they're real involved in it, which is kind of cool for, you know, a show that's brand new, 14 episodes in. Um, yeah. it, it, it's kind of cool. And I thought it would be a cool idea to have you know, like super live fans that I know. Yeah, you know, I know some of them. I'm in communication with some of them on social media. So I was like, come on the show and like talk about your how you found out about us. Ask me any questions you want to know. Like reminisce about going to shows and that kind of stuff. So that that's been super popular with the with with people so far. Um, so that's been that's been the majority of our oh, yeah. guests so far. It's just kind of super like live fans that want to come on and talk about talk about the band. But we yeah. just had on uh, Larry, Larry, uh, Hankin. What's Larry's last name? Hankin. Yes, Hankin. thank you. Larry Hankin. Yes. So that was cool. I mean, just to talk to him and and uh, get a whole different vibe on the show. And he's, I mean, it was great to have him talk about Home Alone and just the stuff he's done. 
great. And Larry Hankin, you know, we, we kind of, uh, as far as podcasting, we, it seems like we're running in, a, in similar circles here with, uh, you know, Steve Joyner putting us in contact with a lot of different people. And I've had him on the podcast three times. Oh, cool. Um, oh, nice. And Larry is just like a wealth of like entertainment, you know, stories. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, he's been in the business so long. It's like good, seven decades. Yeah, <laughs> That's exactly. like seven decades, you know. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I really like talking to him. Uh, you know, the, the, all the all the Home Alone, Breaking Bad, uh, the stories about Sandler and everything, you know, he, uh, friends. He he's, he's a really cool guy. So it sounds like um, what y'all going, got going on is very similar to, you know, the the what I'm doing here with this podcast, you know. Um, and I, I always like having you know, guests to talk about. I can't imagine me doing this all alone and just, you know, kind of, you know, tuning my own horn, listening to my own voice and things like that, you know, sure. it's all about that, that interaction. Right. So Absolutely. I, I, you know, when I started this podcast it was because like, look, I have, we're have we have no social interaction during this whole pandemic thing. I'm like, I need to, I need to do something for fun. I need to talk to people. And mm-hmm. so I started it off very light, you know, started talking to just people I know, um, then branched out, but that was kind of it, you know, it was just kind of like, let's just shoot the shit. Just like y'all were saying. Right. Um, and so, you but know, what... maybe in just this, mm-hmm. I love hearing my own, my own voice. That's the, uh, that's the key to it though. It's not, <laughs> it's not that I don't love hearing my own voice. <laughs> There you go, man. I mean, so it, it serves a few purposes there then, right? Yes. Yes. So with, with it being, you know, like a live show that you guys do, and, you know, there's like very minimal prep and things like that, um, have you found it easy to kind of ru- run it that way? Or, you know, do you, do you have you run into any issues so far? We're like, oh, crap, maybe we should do like a little bit more of this, a little bit more of that. Or has it just been fun along the way? Well, for me personally, it's been it's been fun along the way. I mean, we always end the show with like more shit we have to say. You know what I'm saying? Every time I end, I said, "Well, let's stop it there. We'll leave the audience wanting some more." But Chad and I, we don't run out of stuff to say, man. We could we could really go for for a while. So it's not like we're running out of topics. It's not like I mean, the world is crazy right now, right? So there's just a plethora of stuff to talk about <laughs> and to maybe shed some light on. Yeah, and and what I wanted what I wanted to you know pick up on there too is that you know there's no shortage of of audience either you know like I I, I used to think like oh, I don't want to do a podcast there's so many out there right everybody yeah. thinks that they can they can make a podcast and you know nobody's gonna listen to this right um, but you know we got a loyal few people that I don't even know that listen you know every single week. I mean, I looked at the data and I'm like, okay, there's people listening from other countries and things like that. I'm like, cool. how the hell did that happen? You know, and so there's no shortage of an audience or anything like that. Um, and now the market is even more saturated. So with that, you know, I always say, look, I just do this for fun, right? I have no aspirations of being a Joe Rogan, right? I just want to have fun with it. The moment it stops being fun, I'm not going to do it anymore, right? Mm-hmm. So I want to ask you to, you know, and I ask podcasters this all the time is, is, you know, what's your motivation behind this? What What do you want to do with it? Is it something you want to monetize, right? Do you want to, you know, make it uh, like, like something bigger than it is? I know right now it's kind of in its infancy still, right? A few episodes in. So what are you, what are you trying to do with all this? I think for me, it's just, I like, I like the idea of, you know, having this to do, interacting with John and then having fans come on and talk to them. And I think we want to build it organically and, you know, I mean, hopefully monetize at some point, but for us, it's just a cool outlet to, like John said earlier about just talk about topics that have been censored or, you know, stuff that's been, you know, labeled conspiracy theories, whatever, and uh, just have an outlet to, to talk to us and the other people about. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the, the, honestly, I, I think the sky's the limit with it. Like you said, we want to do it organically. We're, we're never, we're never looking to gouge the audience. Of course we want to monetize, but we want to do it organically. We want people to find us and, and be into what we're saying rather than dump all this money into advertising. And then of course, you know, get some sponsors and stuff to come along that are, you know, that go along with our ideals or, you know, the things we talk about and, and not like, talk about silencing us like oh well you know you guys shouldn't talk about this or you shouldn't talk about that any sponsor that comes along like that like we want no part of so while we want to monetize of course we're we're not going to do it you know in spite of ourselves or in spite of what the audience is there for so we want to do it the right way 
Yeah, and and I'm I'm glad you mentioned that, you know, because you can talk about whatever you want to talk about, and you know, it's not like going on Facebook and then they put you in Facebook jail for like two weeks because you said the wrong thing, right? right. You, you you get to say whatever you want to say, and you know, if you, it, since it's live, you're not editing or anything like that. So hey, whatever is out there is out there. Um, so I want to ask, you know, you mentioned that there's a lot of you know maybe sensitive topics that you talked about, right? What is like one of the, the the things that you've touched on so far where maybe you've gotten feedback or, you know, maybe it's kind of like one of the crazier things you've mentioned. Like what's something that, you know, would surprise people if they listen? You're like, wow, you talked about that. I would say probably anything we talk about. Right, Chad? I mean, <laughs> so so it, it, it seems like a lot. So also, I thought to piggyback off your last question, I thought this would be cool for Chad's fans to begin with because he was always like the cool like a cool person in the band but he was kind of quiet and you could tell when you meet him like this guy's got a lot to say he's got a big personality so that was part of it um but yeah i mean as far as that uh, if you think about all of lives fans they're you know they're probably a lot of um left thinking people so to speak um I, you know just just from from what i'm gathering and we talk a lot of stuff about what's done wrong on both sides, whether it's right or left. We just literally talk and, and say our opinion and, and stuff like that. So there's a lot of controversy with the fans that maybe just came over because they were live fans um, when they hear us talking about, well, hey, our president right now is one of the biggest liars we've ever had in office. All the corruption that's tied to him, his family, his son, his uncle, like, and then he's sitting there literally still lying to our faces. So topics like that get real, uh, get people perturbed and stuff. But we're not saying anything that isn't, you know, the case. It, it's just discussing what's actually going on. And, yeah, it definitely turns people sideways. Yeah, I mean, during, you know, you brought up COVID, during that whole situation, you know, I would I would find out stuff that, for instance, you know, right, probably in like April of – of 2020, I read a whole article about how, you know, the <laughs> gain of function research was, was there's a moratorium put on it by Obama in, in 14, and it was trans, and all that was transferred to the Wuhan lab, which was then funded by the NIH. Right, read a whole article about it. Fauci was in charge of all that, and all of a sudden, that was censored. It came from a wet market. It didn't come from the lab. The lab leak theory was complete bullshit. I'm like, what? Wait, I just read a whole article about. It saying that basically that's what happened <laughs> because here why <laughs> these steps were taken and so that started peaking my not peaking my interest but like going wait a minute now this shit's being censored and then the whole vaccine issue sorry prick whatever you want to call it um you know i <laughs> i early on figured out that this is not probably the best thing to uh to do and people are gonna you know that then now it got censored the hunter biden laptop that was fucking crazy I watched that whole situation go down. You know, there's a 51, what was it, 51 intelligence uh, officials come out and say it's not real. I'm like, what the fuck is going on in our world? Like, you can't, there's no, like, there's no, like, like basis of fact anymore. So everything is, like, seems to be able to be, like, you know, twisted around and fucking, there's no, like, truth anymore. And that's what's, and, it, and all that stuff was being censored by the media, by social media. Mm. It's like, wow, man, what? You know, that's that's what really motivated me to, to want to start talking is like I knew stuff. Am I like am I smarter than most of the world or did I know stuff that was real that then was, you know, completely fucking censored and and suppressed. But then it comes out that it is true. Mm. Right. Later. Right. And the, the, there's no like me a couple about it. Like, oh, well, no, we knew we, we, we just thought it was, you know, they don't even apologize. They're just like, no, nope, it's real now. Mm -hmm. Now we right. say it's real. So it's real. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and, and and if you're mm -hmm. sorry, Fabian, but if, you're, if you're sense if you're censoring the entire country, that's one thing. But when you're censoring one side of a political side, and we only have two, you know, Republicans and Democrats, mm -hmm. that's where it starts getting freaky, man. I mean, that's basically what happened in Nazi Germany. You know, that's basically what happened, you know, in the start of World War II. This is how shit can go sideways very, very quickly. I, I mean, you saw how like draconian Canada got with their censorship th throughout this whole thing. And that mm -hmm. could happen here if we don't all stand up and speak, whether we're on the same side of the political coin or not. If we don't all stand up and say the freedom of speech is our fucking right and we could talk about whatever we want, mm -hmm. then it, that's when the world gets wacky, man.
Perfect. And so I'm glad you brought up those topics, you know, because like um, to me, it's like uh, just like y'all said, like I like to shit on both sides, you know, yeah, like right, there, totally. there's no absolute right or wrong here when you're dealing with, you know, people that are in charge. There's so many people that are incompetent. Um, there's so many people that have only their own interests in in mind and don't care about the rest of the, the, the world or the country or anything like yeah. that. Right. Um, so I like to shit on both sides. And so, you know, sometimes when I have people on, you know, some of the feedback I get is like, you know, OK, you should have shut them down, Fabian. Like, why didn't you, you know, like correct them? Why didn't you let them have it? I'm like, because I'm presenting both sides here. I'm presenting, presenting multiple sides. Like it, this is not a, right. a, a Facebook trolling argument, you know, like. People like to put out what they know or, you know, what their side is, what their point of view is. And I'm just here to listen. If you notice that the name of the podcast is Ignorance is Strength, meaning if I don't know something, I want to hear about it because that's going to make me stronger. Right. Correct. Like, yep. And so even, let's say everybody's wrong. Right. And I just let them have their point of view. I at least know where you're coming from, you know. Right. Um, and I've had people on here with some really interesting takes on things. You know, and some people love it and some people don't, but I, I'm not in the business of shutting people down for, for what they're thinking. You right. know, um, I want to, I want to hear it all, you know? And so sure. on your, on your podcast, I assume, you know, you kind of have like that same mindset, right? It's not necessarily like, uh, let me just take you down in this debate. It's more so let's share uh, information with each other here. Yeah. For instance, when Larry was on, he started going, you know, he, he wasn't a Trump fan, whatever, not that he has to be, but like. We just let him talk about that and like, okay, great. No. And didn't, didn't uh, get into that. He just, he, he had a, a few right. moments there where he, you know, talk about that stuff and that's fine. I, I, I wanted to bring up one thing. Like I, th- I really think, and I've been saying this, that we need fucking term limits on yeah. all, you know, all of government, all of government set term limits. And age limits. <laughs> and age limits too. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Let's take them out of 75 and, you know, eight years, you get eight years to, to be a uh, senator or congressman and congresswoman, whatever congressperson, <laughs> maybe twelve. And by the way, I mean, know, but... did you just see what happened in, in with, with this <laughs> the whole deal in the uh, Senate chambers? Uh huh. The guy making a gay porno. He's a fucking aide to a Maryland Democratic senator or uh, congressman. He made a gay porno in the Senate chamber. Wow, it's getting wild. And crazy. I just saw I just saw a quote from the guy saying. He's he's exploring his legal options. It's like, are you that fucking narcissistic that you you can't just say I completely fucked up. I'm sorry. No, I'm he he's he, he may already made it political. He's like the the, the rights attacking me for this. It's like you wow. got butt fucked in, in the fucking Congress. Senate chambers <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, That's what the crazy. Fuck? That's the well, other like, thing. Just we driving nuts about what's going on today is like social media makes everyone so fucking narcissistic it's like no one can admit that they're fucking wrong about something it's crazy right mm-hmm. well, not yeah, right. a lot of people can yeah for like sure if i'm in if i'm in a porno in my local fucking courts like court like you know what i'm saying they would be throwing the book at me and it wouldn't be political at all there's certain things you can and cannot do you know in a society and i would say fucking butt fucking or any of that shit in the senate chambers is probably one of them that's yeah. Well, he did get fired, but he's but he's made a statement. It's just, it doesn't sound like he's remorseful at all. I was like, wow. Oh, yeah, was it written in dude? their handbook. You know, was it written in the handbook <laughs> that he couldn't do it? <laughs> right, exactly. There's no yeah. specific passage yeah. where I couldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, though nothing strictly prohibiting sodomy or you know anything like that. So yeah. we're we're good. Yeah, making a porno in Senate chambers. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's getting it's getting pretty pretty wild, right? Um, now you know, just uh, wanted wanted to touch on the two of you, right? What uh, how do how do y'all know each other? Like, how did how did you have you been like friends for a long time, right? How did you get together to start this uh, with each other? This this podcast that you're doing. I'm Chad's cousin. No, um, so I've been a long time <laughs> fan of uh, of of his uh, original band Live. Uh, met him a couple times, you know, backstage at shows and stuff. But really, um, you know, once that pandemic hit, um, I started a podcast called Good Times Universe and um, ended up uh, Chad coming on as a guest and came on twice. The second time I went to his studio in York, Pennsylvania, which is beautiful, baby. And you got to if you ever get out there, studio at 210 in York is beautiful. You got to check it out. I mean, everything's top notch. 
But we got there, and I, I, I texted him before. I'm like, you mind if I bring a nice bottle of uh, bourbon or whiskey over? He's like, absolutely, let's do it. And uh, we cracked one open, uh, got through like three quarters of it, two hours later on the podcast, talking some cool stuff. And um, I had this idea to do this live show for a while, but I never could figure out like the right host or co-host with it. And um, I ran the idea by Chad. I'm like, dude, I'm like, we had some chemistry on there. You want to try this thing out? And he was like, absolutely. And uh, here we are. Yeah, and that's that's pretty cool. You know, I think that having access to people that maybe, you know, uh, you listen to or, or like, for example, watched on TV or movies and things like that. Um, you know, you know, at first when I started doing the podcast it was like local people that I know I'm talking about cousins and friends and things like that. Right. Just test mm -hmm. the waters. Then it started getting more people like, you know, we're up and coming. And then all of a sudden these established people, you know, like I interviewed Larry Hankin a few times, you know, uh, pro wrestlers, Santino Morella, um, oh, nice. Tommy Chong. Right. Um, and then another one that was really interesting um, is was uh, and, and I talk to him regularly now online, everything like that is uh, his name's Michael Ray Bauer. So he was a 90s, you know, TV kid that was on. I don't know if, any, if you all remember the TV show Salute Your Shorts from Nickelodeon. Yeah, shorts. No, yeah, I don't remember that, but he played maybe. a guy, a guy named Donkey Lips. Um, okay. And <laughs> oh wow, Chad, yeah. you were a little bit older at this time because I, I think this was like going on when I was around twelve ish to fourteen. I'm forty one, Fabian, by the way. So yeah. Chad's a couple of years older, so I think it was just a little bit. But Chad, you would like it, man. I know you're uh, sense yeah, of what, I'm ten years older, older. So was, yeah, we were <laughs> we were fucking on the road heavy. I wasn't watching Nickelodeon then. <laughs> Yeah, well, you're the world. <laughs> right. You're like, I'm not interested in this shit right now, right? <laughs> uh, but you know, I wanted to bring that up because uh, kind of a similar uh, thing there, where it's like, you know, for me, it was like, wow, you know, I really like this guy's work and stuff like that. But people are much more, you know, uh, accessible now, right? And so, yeah. you know, you wouldn't think back in the day, like, well, how can I get, you know, in contact with this person, right? How how can I reach out to them? And now it's so easy. All I did was like reach out to him on on Instagram and like hey man you know uh, uh you know big fan and I got a podcast and you know uh I, I see we have a lot of you know similar you know no uh, interest and things like that would you be interested in coming on and he was all for it you know and and it was it was kind of like y'all were talking about you know he kind of had uh he hit it off had, had good chemistry and things like that um and so yeah now you know you know talk to him regularly and and everything and it's oh, like cool. You know, it's 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 really cool that you were were able to do those things now, right? It's not it's not like anymore, like you know, uh, like it's like oh, it, it's it's so hard. It's it's putting people up on a pedestal. It's like well, people right. are people, you know. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. what you come come to find. You know, people are are, are people, and and um, you know, every, everybody just wants to 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 have that connection and get their voice heard and things like that. So pretty cool, pretty cool how that all came about there. That's very cool. Good point yeah. you bring up, Fabian. Uh, we actually spoke about this on our last show that, like, back in the day, communication between, you know, people from different countries and whatnot was so hard. But now that the internet has us all, you know, kind of connected and exposed and stuff like that, we don't need to get all, all of our information from our governments and the people above us who, who uh, you know, sometimes don't have our best interests at heart. We can actually reach out to people in China and Russia and speak and the people there are not what their government is. So it's like we're all going into these wars and stuff by people leading us, and it's not really what the people want. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure if you speak to most Russians, they don't want to go and invade Ukraine. I'm sure if you speak to most Ukrainians, they don't want to be defending themselves against Russia. But their governments put them there. So it's like just we have to figure out a way to – really unite the world because like we said we all breathe the same air man we're all living on this earth we're all fucking up this earth but the more we communicate and the more openness that comes about is the way we incite real change and yeah. um i just think that's it's it's a beautiful thing like the powers and the people they got the guns but we got the numbers man jim morrison mm. said it best i think you nailed it right there right i mean just uh you know, people connecting to people, we're like, nah, we don't want this either, right? Um, and 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 a little play on the, you know, the 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 whole uh, gracious few thing. It's a disgraceful disgraceful few who you oh. know have the 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 power the the what do you call it the power and the ability to do things, and that sucks. 
You know, yeah, I know yeah. we, we we put them there and stuff like that, but, you know, there's got to be a better way, you know, because some of these people that, that are making decisions, I'm like, who tied your shoes this morning? You know? Right. Yeah, exactly. yeah for sure. Yeah. yeah. How? I mean, some of these people are just, you just are like, how did you even get elected? Like, you're just, you're not intelligent. Like, what the fuck happened? Look, uh, what happened? I, 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 I'm glad one that we uh, avoided in this country. I know I'm not from Georgia, but it was like Herschel Walker. Did you guys see what a <laughs> what a train wreck Herschel Walker was in, in his campaign? Yeah, he's a bit of I yeah, heard, he's not a great speaker, that's for sure. No, that was it. I heard bits and pieces like pulled media and it was like, wow, dude, are these your beliefs? Because if so, I don't know how you get along in life. No. Like I've heard him say some pretty racist and shitty shit shitty yeah, stuff. I, I really think he has brain damage. Like I'm not even joking. Right. Oh, he's probably a CTE yeah. for sure. Yeah. 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 You know, but it's like that's the kind of people that get cl- either they get close to or they, you know, get elected into office. Right. Right. Like they're the ones that are oh, making look decisions. At, look at AOC, for God's sake. Oh, like, my God. Jesus God. Yeah. I mean, like, really? Yeah. I mean, really? She got so, reelected. Mm-hmm. It's fucking unbelievable. So extreme on everything. Right. Right. Yeah. I guess yeah. you don't know technically who you're electing until you they actually get in there and start trying to do the job. Right. So it's like. Mm-hmm. You, they run on all these promises and, right. and campaign promises, and then they get in there. It's a different tune. So it's like, but when you have somebody voted in over and over and over, and they stand for the shit that you don't stand for, it's like fucking wake up, man. Go out and and, and vote somebody else in because this guy's not working. He's yeah. been in politics since 1983, and he's been wrong 75 percent of the time with what he's doing. And and it's like, but they're still in there. Yeah. Another, reason for, it's weird. another reason for term limits. It's like mm. because right because someone someone knew that maybe has great ideas and they get, get elected on these great ideas. They go they come into that system, and it's a whole different ball game. The pressure of the people that are really in charge, you know, the 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 longtime senators or congressmen, they have they have their own little cliques and their own little yep. you know their, their own little groups, and they're going to vote one way, and they fucking pressure the shit out of those people to vote with them. I mean, you don't know what's wrong or fucked up or you don't want to do it. It's like that's that's how it is. So that's another like I said, another reason for term limits. It's like you can't you take away all that. Like everyone's on the same playing field at that point. I have eight years to get something done. If not, it, I'm out. That's the best reason I've ever heard for term limits, to be honest, Chad. That's a great fucking thing. Like you said, they come in, there are all these clicks already formed, so it's hard to for them to go against the grain, but if it's you know new every eight or twelve years, whatever they if decided like that kind of gets rid of that shit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and so like at work, I I I'm you know part of the essentially part of the hiring process. I train people, right? And it's really interesting to see the people that are coming in all gung ho, like you know we're, I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to do things. You know I'm going to do great things, right? And then you go and observe them afterwards. You're like, oh, they've been beat down already. <laughs> You know, yes. and, 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 you know, by people that have been doing the wrong things for so long. Right. So they right. come in excited to do things, to challenge things, to try new things. And every time they try something new, it's like, mm, but we're already doing it this way. Just, you know, just do it this way. Right. So I think it's the same way in our, our government, you know, and, and, and really we do like, like you mentioned, you nailed it, right. We do need, you know, that fre- a breath of fresh air every now and then. So I, I mean, I hope we get to see that, you know, hopefully the people so, that have to vote on term limits are the people that, you know, don't want them. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Now, there's, something called, there. there's something called the convention of States that they've been trying to put together, but it's a, uh, some constitutional, uh, little, Little thing on the Constitution where you have a convention. I think you need 38 states to be on board to launch a convention of states, and it's like you could radically change, like get rid of all the people that are, you know, in, like I think you get rid of all most congressmen and senators. Yeah, the convention of clean, states, but, clean house, fuck it, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, if 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 you think about it, like. The, the, <laughs> If they did a sweep like that and just said, okay, we need to start a new, nobody's going to go for that. But if the, the the government was built for the people, by the people, so these people running for these government pos- positions shouldn't be out for themselves. They should be out for the people. And like Chad said, 
They're the ones who would vote on these term limits, and they're not because it's not in their best interest. Mm -hmm. But that's not what they're there for. They're there for our best interest. And that's what needs to change in politics in the U.S., if not politics everywhere. But they need to realize they're not there for themselves. It's a public servant job. You are there for the people of the United States, and you have their best interest at heart, not your own. Nancy Pelosi, her husband is better than Warren Buffett in the stock market. Why? Right. Because mm. she has and he has all that inside information, not because he's better than Warren Buffett. It, it, it's crazy. I don't know. You know, I, I don't like I, I don't even like to get too in the mud about politics. But one of my things is that, look, we're, we're not as divided by like something like race as people think. I think oh, we're more no. divided by class. Right. And so. What what bugs me all the time is like we have all these rich folk, right? And they're trying to pander to those of us that are working class or poor, right? I'm like, none of y'all know shit about this. Right. You, you, you didn't grow up this way, right? You're right. not living this way. So my my thing has always been like, you know, where's the, the, the people, you know, from like the lower tax brackets representing us, you know? Because everybody seems to seems to have some sort of money, whether they were born into it or they've acquired it through some other like, you know, business means or something like that. But they need to have some some common folk up in there, you know, that way it's a little bit more, uh, you know, realistic as far as like, look, this is really what's going on in the, in, in the communities there. They know the problems as opposed to just hearing about them. They've been there, done that, where, like you said, a lot of the. People in there, they they come from money, or or they've built, uh, they've amassed money along the way, and, and they've lost touch and, and sight of what you know is actually going on, and um, you know we're the ones suffering for it, you know when it comes down to it, and that's on both sides of it, man. That's right, that's left, that's not just uh, one side of it. That's politics in the United States, period. Yeah, in my mind. Well, I think even even if you do come from, even if you're lucky enough to get elected and you're from the lower income class, which I, I think it happens, but. I think once you get into the machine, well, well, once you become a congressman or senator, you you get that you get paid for life, right? I think if, I think you do your first term, you get paid for life. The which same, is, yeah, like the same, which everything. is bullshit, yeah. Yeah, which is bullshit, and you get fucking health care for life. You get all these things, but then you're in this machine where it's it's all about enriching yourself, basically. I mean, using your using your your clout or whatever you have now to to go out and make money. And that's right. what people do, and uh, you know, I mean, I can understand the allure of that. Even if mm -hmm. you come from a poor background, it's like, fuck, I'm making money now, like I'm a millionaire. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, you know, but like things too, like simple things, right? Let's say you mentioned AOC, someone like AOC, right? Who, listen, I'm not a fan, right? But there might be people out there like, oh, but she's trying to do good things for like the, you know, the environment and things. Like, all right, let's let's play devil's advocate, right? She's trying to do all that, right? she's one of these people that's pushing for, you know, us to not, no longer have gas stoves. Right? right. And it's like, okay, cool. I see your point, whatever. I don't agree with it, but let's look at it realistically. Let's look at a family who's already paying, you know, 250, 300 for an electric bill. You really think right. having an, an electric stove is going to be, you know, beneficial to them. Whereas they maybe pay like less than $50 in gas every month. Right now, right. they're going to have to pay an astronomical amount more for ele right. uh, for an electric stove. And same thing with like electric cars, right? Like, <laughs> what, what do you think we're going to plug these things in? Right. You know, right. So yeah. that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't think that they're realistic in their thinking sometimes. It's like this big old, like, grand idea that's like, this is going to get, you know, my name out there. This is going to be my legacy. And it's like, but you're not thinking about people. Oh, you're right. definitely not thinking about people, well, especially like, I mean, you live in California, what, by 2035, you won't be able to buy an internal combustion engine car here, so yeah. only electrics, yeah. and yet we can't, you know, the the, the summer comes, uh, everyone has their air conditioning on, and they're like, hey, uh, yeah, don't plug in your, don't plug in your right. electric cars at this time. Or, or like, blackouts, right? Blackouts. Yeah. yeah. There's not enough power for it. It's like... The left is pushing this whole fucking environmental, like electric car and no gas stoves, but there's no, they, they have no fucking re actual replacement for it. Right. Like you can't run a grid. There's no grid in the whole world run on solar and, 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 and wind. It doesn't exist because you need base yeah. load. You don't have base load with those. And it's just, so anyway, it's, that's, it, that's one of the things that's driving me crazy about, 
about that whole side. It's just like they have this ideal. Of, I think their intentions are good, but they have no fucking real, real way to do it. Well, there's that disconnect that we were talking about. Like, yeah, it would be nice if everybody had an electric stove and an electric car. Would it be better for the environment in the grand scheme? I don't know. I don't know what it costs to mine fucking, you know, lithium out and all that stuff. I really don't have an answer to that. But the fact that they think that it's okay to make it a law that that's going to be the only thing sellable at some point is absurd. Like, that's a, like a dictator almost. Like, you, you're mm-hmm. telling me I can't buy a gasoline car, but I can only buy electric? I'm in America. I have options. It's not just one or the other. Like, they ha- that's that disconnect I'm talking about where, you know, they're living in fairy tale world where – not everybody wants electric. Not everybody understands electric. Not everybody wants to plug their car in. They want convenience. They want to go fill up for, you know, 30 bucks. Like it's just a lot that needs to be thought about and talked about rather than then just doing, they need to talk to their constituents and see what's best for them in my mind. Mm -hmm. Yep. A lot of bullshit there, but changing gears (laughs) a little bit. I'm like, all right, we can go, we can go, we we'll go deep into all that, but uh, right, right. just want to change gears a little bit, right? And talk, no you know, about where, you know, where's your podcast heading, right? What are some things that we can look forward to, you know, people that want to listen, you know, obviously we're going to get, you know, good conversations, whether things are controversial, funny, or, you know, just everyday uh, banter, but what are some things that are coming up? What is, what's on the horizon? You mentioned, you meant you, you interviewed guys like, you know, Larry Hankin. Um, what, what, what can people look forward to? Wow. So we have a lot of ideas. We actually have something cool coming up mid-summer, end of summer. I don't know if we're talking about it yet or not, uh, Chad. That's up to you. But we have a lot of cool uh, things that we're planning for the audience and uh, more interactive stuff. So it's not just us over a computer. Uh, it, I'll, I'll tease it like that. So more interactive stuff with our with the audience and, and, and things of that nature um, and kind of dissecting that, uh, what, what do they call that? fourth wall barrier or some shit uh, on tv and mm-hmm. and and, get, and giving them um some cool stuff to do some real interactive stuff um and that's on the horizon we're, we're in the process of planning all that out now and making sure that what we're planning is fun is exciting and and makes people want want wanting more yeah and as we gain more traction i've started to reach out to like some musicians that i know so, and I haven't even told John this, but there's this, like a drummer guy that I met at, at this drumathon thing I did. Like his name's Mike Bailey. He played with uh, with um, the the former lead singer of Poison. I guess he's still the Brett Michaels, president of Brett, Brett Michaels Band, and he has some good oh, cool. stories. So I might you know, talking to him. I don't know. Just I think as as you know, as we get more and more traction, like I said, we'll have you know more and more like I don't know bigger people on. I think yeah. You know? And, uh, but I still want to go back and keep having the live fans on too and keep doing that. So I think it's nice. fun. I was going to say, we'll never lose sight of that. Like, uh, yeah. they're a big part of that. They, they've been there since the beginning. So, regardless how big this show gets, because, like you said, you don't want to be Rogan, but I want to take over Rogan's spot. So, as big as this show gets, we'll <laughs> always have. We'll always have those fans on and the people that were there from the beginning because that's what made this show what it is now. So we can never lose sight of that for sure. That's what's great about Rogan. Just if I may go off on that, it's like he's uh, he's he still does it just for fun. Like he doesn't give, like he's the biggest fucking podcaster in the world and doesn't yeah. fucking care. Like he puts them up randomly. It's he picks the guests that he wants to talk to. There's no fucking agenda. It's, it's fucking great. I just I dig it. <laughs> he's a national treasure. Thank God for that guy during COVID because everybody else got canceled and like YouTube demonetized, took episodes off. Like if he didn't do that Spotify deal when he did, who knows what would have happened? Who knows what information we we would have gotten during that time? Like he was a big beacon of light during that time when, you know, we're all going through the world blind and trying to listen to our leaders. Like I don't want to fucking say Anthony Fauci is a lying piece of shit, but unfortunately he is a lying piece of shit. I hate to say it because, you know, I want to respect the guy in that position, but you know, if you can't call a spade a spade, you're not in America. <laughs> All right. So we've got a lot to look forward to. It sounds like, right? <laughs> oh, yes, oh, 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 I was like, well, that's that's an answer. All right. Um, so, you know, with, with that, um, where can people find you? Where can they, you know, go and listen to you or maybe look up some of your social media or something like that? So for the, for the gracious, too, you have uh, – 
Uh, it's like pretty much at the gracious two everywhere on Facebook, YouTube. Uh, eventually we might just go to rumble because YouTube has taken down and demonetized a couple and stuff like that. So we might eventually just be strictly on rumble, but right now it's Facebook rumble, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter that we go live uh, out on. Um, and they're all at the gracious two, except for in- Instagram is at the underscore gracious underscore two. And then, um, Chad, uh, for for Chad, you tell them where they can catch you, dude, and uh, and your hashtag. <laughs> oh, I'm mostly on Instagram at, at the Chad Gracie, and <laughs> my hashtag is Chad Gracie hates hashtags. <laughs> it's the best, dude. So I, best I I have one that I, I I say out loud. I don't even hashtag it. I say uh, less hashtags, more hash browns. There you go. Perfect. There yes. you <laughs> go. That should be a damn T-shirt, right? Well, that's great. Uh, that should be your yeah. shirt, yeah. I, 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 let me pitch it to McDonald's, see what they say, but probably won't go with it. Man, one time I I think I, got, I went to Facebook jail because uh, I suggested to Coca-Cola that they should have the slogan, like, you know, they, it, picture this, right? Wow. You have, like, a, a really hot day, right, and somebody's messing with you, and, you know, they, they, they sneak a drink of your Coke, right? Or, 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 or they're really, no, or something like that, right? Um, I don't know, something along those lines. And then this person's really annoying, and you just you you, you give them their you give them a, a cold Coca Cola with a straw, and you say, "Suck my Coke." Right? <laughs> you got in Facebook jail because of that. I went to Facebook jail because Jesus of that. Jesus Christ! They, they reported it, blocked me, and I'm like, "Whoa, that's crazy!" I was just trying to be funny, but I'm like, "That would be that would be oh. great, you know, for like uh, advertising on like you know uh, funny you know podcasts Ooh. or like." Oh, yeah. Imagine, imagine that T-shirt. <laughs> That's the other thing about this yeah. world: comedy is lost. Like you can't fucking. It's like you know, you got to all tiptoe around like to, to be a comedian around now. It's like That's oh god, funny. why? Why would they fucking cancel you? Oh man, I love, I love, I love offensive comedy. Like this one guy does yeah. it pretty, pretty well. I think he, you know, and you could tell it's not like mean spirited. Y'all ever heard like uh, what was his name? Shane Gillis. Oh fuck! He's Hell great. yeah! He does that. He does a Trump voice, and then he 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 talks oh about God. his uh his uncle with Down syndrome. And he does like a spot on, you know, impression of somebody. And, and, and I mean, I don't mean to, you know, sound like oh they're all like that, but you could tell he's he's imitating somebody with Down syndrome, right? Because right. he's seen it enough where he can, you know, uh, he 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 can he can he can like mimic it perfectly almost, you know. Mm-hmm. But like that guy's hilarious, and I guess he got he got canceled from something. I can't remember, but uh, I think he was supposed to be like an SNL, and 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 Ooh. he wasn't able to because of something he said. But oh, Jesus, whatever. Yeah, yeah man, it, it, people just want, want to laugh, you know, they want to take everything so exactly. seriously. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And like you said, if it's not mean spirited, because that's comedy shouldn't be mean spirited, because then there's no comedy there. You're just being a douchebag asshole. But if mm-hmm. if you're saying it to to draw mm-hmm. light to something or making light of something. Uh, I, I don't see an issue with it, you know what I'm saying? But if if, the, if you got meanness behind it, you know, then maybe I'll have an issue with you. I don't want you canceled, but I might talk to you outside for a second. Hey, buddy, yeah. what was that about? But I don't yeah. want you canceled. I don't think anybody should be canceled. You, people should be able to look at somebody and say, that guy's a dickhead. I don't want to watch him anymore. Mm-hmm. Rather than, rather than, oh, no, he can't be on. We're canceling him. No, let the people decide, dude. Yeah, we'll exactly. decide yeah. what we like and what we don't, you know? Well, I mean, it's like when, you know, you say something that people don't agree with and all of a sudden they're trying to find, you know, your your oh, yeah. family, your friends, your oh, yeah. employer <laughs> and be like, this is what they said. And they screenshot it. It's like you, you got to put a lot of energy into that, you know? Yep. Right. And they Too can probably energy. put it into something better. Yeah. Uh-huh. Exactly. Uh, well, glad we're on the same page there. But, uh, you know, there's uh, I'm sure there's a lot more we can we can talk about and maybe some somewhere down the road. We, you know, we talk again. But I want to thank both of you for being on. Uh, appreciate it. You know, good. Definitely good conversation. Hope people check you out. But anything else you want to throw out there to the podcast world? Uh, well, thank you, Fabian, for having us on. Um, again, just people have an open mind, man. Don't just look at headlines. Do some research. Uh, you know, if, if you were one way for so long and you don't want to change because of it, that's just being ignorant. You know what I'm saying? Like really look into your politicians or, or your people that are, you know, you're voting in and stuff like that and make sure they're the right fit for your town, for your area, for, for whatever. And just, um, you know, communication is key. If anybody's trying to silence you, it's because they're scared of you. 
So just keep that in mind. All right. Yeah, what he said. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Fabian. Appreciate yeah, for it. sure. Well, John, Chad, appreciate you guys. Uh, and then for everybody listening at home, I appreciate you. Thank you. Fuck you and good night. <laughs>